tonight in the frantic, and I mean frantic, nationwide search for an adorable four-year-old girl believed to be on the run with her mom and her mom's boyfriend, who just happens to be a tier three sex offender, the most serious kind of sex offender. This fugitive's past victims were just 10 and 11 years old. What on earth is wrong with these moms who let these cretins into their daughter's lives? Are they nuts? Tonight, we learn the frightening story gets even more twisted. Little Haley Donovan's uncle is a sex offender himself. That ex-con uncle and the little girl's own dad allegedly helped this sex offender boyfriend escape from a halfway house. This is one sicko family tree. Then that boyfriend, Robbie Potter, took the woman and the young child named Haley with him on what is turning into a nationwide game of Find the Fugitive. The child's father, James Donathan, and the ex-con uncle, Kyle Watson, were arrested and charged with complicity to escape. This is mind-boggling. In what crazy, mixed-up world does a father and an uncle help a pedophile escape from a halfway house to then take off with their precious four-year-old girl and her mom? Haley's father insists he didn't know Potter was a sex offender. I don't know him personally, you know, but I found out a little bit about him the last couple of days. What you find out? Well, I found out he's a tier three sex offender. He's, you know, he's known for messing with kids. Whatever. Authorities believe the trio may now be in Colorado or Arizona, but perhaps not. There's sightings. We're going to talk about that in a second. Breaking news. They're looking for a pickup truck resembling this one. Look at it carefully. The back windows have a unique identifying feature, lightning bolts. Will authorities be able to track down little Haley Donathan, who they say is in grave danger? And why do we continue to see mothers allowing their children to be in the presence of sex offenders? It's stupid, and it's dangerous. Straight to my fantastic expert panel. Mike Gaynor, retired NYPD detective and president of East Coast Detectives. Bradford Cohen, criminal defense attorney. Stacey Honowitz, Florida prosecutor. And Dr. Dale Archer, clinical psychiatrist. We need a shrink tonight on this one. And by phone, Michael Knowlton, news director at WMRNAM, Marion, Ohio, as well as... Deputy U.S. Marshal Brian Fitzgibbon, the lead investigator in this case. Marshal, so glad you could join us. I understand there's some breaking news, brand new reports, possible sightings of Canvas. What can you tell us about this? Thank you, Jane, for having us, and we appreciate all the information that you're putting out there and that the community is providing. Glad breaking you. news that we did receive last tip, and I just fielded, I just got off the phone, was a tipster down in Marion, Ohio, which is less than an hour away from Mansfield, where the fugitive escaped from the halfway house, was putting Candace there as of Saturday. That would, uh, that would definitely put our timeline off as far as going out towards Arizona and Colorado, but we have yet to confirm that. The tipster was very vague, and I'm working with uh, Walmart security right now, who uh, are denying the fact that, that a transaction was made by Candace and it could possibly be the tipster was off by a week, which would properly figure our timeline to be correct with Candace leaving the campgrounds. In fact, they, uh, Walmart had her as returning a tent. Oh. Um, that's correct, a tent, which would uh, verify our story that we originally had, that they were out camping in southern Ohio. Now, I understand there's a warrant out for Candace, the mother's arrest, and explain to me why that is when at this point she could be a victim, presumably held against her will. Um, working sex offender cases, you see how manipulative they could be. And somebody like Potter, he, he, he finds somebody that's, that's very vulnerable in Candace, and he, he somehow figured a way to convince her to pick him up from this halfway house and escape and aid and embed him onto his ways of being a fugitive. So the Richmond County Sheriff's Office went ahead and they charged her with aiding and abetting of, uh, of the fugitive and that's where the charges come forth on her. So uh, just to understand, it wasn't like she was abducted along with the child. She willingly went with this Cretan and, along with her daughter on a ride and presumably they were headed out on a camping trip. That's correct. It was, it was, uh, there was not force involved. Um, 
our only concern is that the, that the child did not have the choice and that the three-year-old child does not have the same choice and knowledge of getting in a car with a tier three sex offender. And just to clarify, because there's been a whole bunch of conflicting reports about how long they've been missing, I understand they went missing a lot longer than they've been reported missing. In other words, we just sort of caught on to this late in the game. That's correct. Um, the, the missing persons report came uh, after the fact because Candace is the legal guardian of Haley and um, Candace's mother, Mary Watson, reported them missing after the weekend uh, camping trip. Uh, and that the locals were handling it and the marshal service were, we were uh, notified on June 4th and have been following leads ever since. And one last question, Marshall, uh, what, what about Colorado and Arizona? Because I heard they might be heading there. Colorado and Arizona, we, we can confirm that we have uh, marshals and, and police officers from the Fugitive Task Force working leads. We're following them. We're fielding leads, numerous leads across nearly a dozen states that callers are calling in from 1866, the number four, the word wanted. All right. um, and we're encouraging everybody, if you have anything, please call in. We could use every single bit of help we can on this case. Marshall, you are doing an excellent job for you and the officers who are working to find this child. Good luck, and we hope we get some good news. We pray. Haley's dad, James Donovan, explained to reporters what he claims was his role in allegedly helping sex offender Robin Potter escape the halfway house. Listen to this. Potter showed up in my house one night. It was like 12, it was like 12, 20, 12, 30. And, uh, he come over, he used, he used my girlfriend's phone. You know, he happened, he did, he happened to call my daughter's mom. You know, that she showed up at three o'clock to pick him up. They take off, you know, but this was, he had, he had just escaped from the VOA. Stacey Otto, this guy is yawning. His daughter is missing and he's yawning and saying, I didn't know this guy was a sex offender when he came. He knew that he had escaped from a halfway house. Why do you let anybody who'd escaped from a halfway house into your house? Well, how do you even answer that question, Jane? I mean, quite frankly, you look at the tape of him, you listen to how he participated in what he did, and you say to yourself, this guy could care less. And really, he opens the door for this guy that he knows is in a halfway house, doesn't bother to ask according to him why he's at the halfway house, and allows him to call the mother and take off with the daughter. So that's why he's such an integral part, and that's why the investigators are saying he must have known something was going on, and he must have been an active participant in helping them to escape. But there's no logical explanation for why someone would do anything like that. There's Dr. None. Dale Archer, what is wrong with these people? I hate to say it that way, but this whole family seems a little screwy. Apparently, um, the aunt tried to warn the mom, don't go off with this guy. He's convicted of battery on a 10 and 11 year old child and she didn't want to believe it because he apparently told her oh it was a 17 year old girl trying to imply that it was some sort of statutory rape consensual sex situation yeah it's the same story that i hear over and over in, in ca similar cases but you know it comes down to self-esteem and obviously you're typically looking at someone who was abused when they were young they don't feel they're deserving of love so anyone who shows them the slightest bit of attention they'll latch on to that person and disregard anything else in their life including their child i'm not defending what she did i think it's atrocious but i see it over and over again how, mike gainer how do you escape from a halfway house anyway isn't a halfway house where you go you go in and out and you, you pursue your life as you try to transition away from prison to the regular world? Yeah, generally speaking, but I understand this particular place, it was easier to, to get out of than it is to get into. So <laughs> he, did, he didn't have much difficulty getting out. He had quite a bit of assistance. And the, the issue, once again, we have over here is another mother thirsty for love that befriends a degenerate like this. And now the daughter's life is in jeopardy. So. And why the heck did this suspect, a tier three sex offender, only do three years in the slammer for two sexual batteries of a 10 and 11 year old? Why wasn't he wearing a GPS? Let's think about that. We'll answer those questions in a moment. More on this appalling story. How did a mom surround her little girl with so many sex offenders? Call 1877 JBN says 1877 586 7297. Sound off 